look at me. Don't look at me. Now let's get to our next film. It's a movie called Sanctuary, and it stars Christopher Abbott and Margaret Qualley. And it's a two-hander. She, Margaret Qualley plays a dominatrix. She enters the domicile. He lives in a, of Christopher Abbott. Christopher Abbott lives in his beautiful apartment in some beautiful Tony area of town. And he is about to become a, inherit his father's, I believe, hotel empire. He's worth an estimated about $180, $185 million. This character, um, this person played by Christ, Christopher Abbott. So obviously with a son about to inherit an empire, his sexual fantasy obviously is to become powerless. And that is the job of the dominatrix is to make him powerless. And that has been their sessions I guess, I don't know how long it's been going on, but they've had that business pleasure connection for a while. Ultimately, what happens is since he's going to be crowned the next king of the this hotel empire, he gives her a parting gift of this really expensive, beautiful watch. But that's not really cool because when people give some an employee, an employee a watch, that means, hey, you, I just fired you. I just let you go. See you later. He tries to give her a parting gift, but she decides, hey, you know what? I'm worth more than a a stupid watch. And there's no way that this, my client is just going to let me go just like that. So the rest of the movie deals with a battle of wills between this multi-millionaire played by Christopher Abbott and an heir to that, that uh, wonderful fortune versus this working class sex worker. And it's a very interesting movie, at least from my vantage point. Bruce Perky, your thoughts on Sanctuary? Yes, I agree. Um, I kind of wish that the descriptions didn't even say as much as you said, but I know they do. So we'll have put it out there because you kind of need to know that. that. But we, one thing you have to understand is how this movie starts. It doesn't start with that premise being known. And I didn't know that premise. I didn't read anything yeah. when I watched it. Because comes it comes in and you just see her coming in, you know, dressed up to the nines, looking like a businesswoman. And she wants to interview him and it's presented as she's going to interview him to see kind of a background review to see if he's going to by the board of the company to see if he's going to be uh, okay to possibly take over that position. So you have about a 20 minute segment at the beginning of this movie where it slowly starts going down the path and you start getting the sense that something's not right here, something's different. And the the power dynamic between them becomes apparent to the point where, and it's a really great moment. Once again, we already know this now, some degree, there's a great moment where they kind of stop because he's written the script of what she's supposed to say. And you see the, the counter, the kind of back and forth about how to stick to that script. And it's very interesting how then it slips back into the script, but you're not sure that it slipped back into the script until you go a little further and you're like, oh, are we back in the script now? Or is this actually now just free forming? And the whole movie turns on that opening 20 minutes because that you're in a constant, I guess as a viewer, to me, how it worked was you're in a constant quandary about whether this is another version of their role play. This is another version of their, of their ongoing power dynamic or is this an actual conflict between them? And you're constantly pulled back and forth between those two poles. Uh, but this is a movie that will easily fall for people if they don't like the characters, because they're kind of unlikable, or they're at least not intrigued by the characters. Like I could, for example, I could see Eric tipping either way on this. I could see him loving the hell out of this movie. I could also see him being annoyed to the hell out of this movie and just giving it like one star because he hates he hates everything about it. So I, I'd be really curious to see what he thought. I really loved the ride and I felt frustrated at times, but in good ways. Uh, frustrated with the characters, but in good ways. And this is a smart script where I think it, it lets you get frustrated with what the character's doing, but then it answers that frustration by letting the characters also be really annoyed by what's happening or being angry or being, you know, how they, how do they get sucked back in? Cause this is a, basically, like you said, it's a two hander. This could easily be a stage play. It may have been a stage play. I don't know. Um, but yeah. I can see it. I can see it being a stage play. It's framed as such, right? It's framed yeah. as such. Yeah. Cause it's basically all in that apartment and the outside or a hotel room, I guess it is very fancy hotel room and the outside hallway and the elevator. And that's it. Never Bruce, goes anywhere else. Bruce, you're actually more eloquent than me. No trolling here. Can can we say something about the visuals? The visuals really pop too. It's a beautiful yeah. looking movie, correct? Like a Yeah, it looks really good. It's really rich. And it's it's filmed in a really interesting way. It's it's active. The camera is active. There's a very active point of view in this. Yeah, the yeah. writer, it's based on a screenplay from Micah Bloomberg. I I don't know if I I don't remember if I interviewed Micah Bloomberg, but he's actually one of the co-creators of that Amazon Prime video, that Prime video series that I really enjoyed. I believe it's called um, Homecoming. I could be wrong on this. I'm looking it up right now. I think he did Homecoming. But it's anyways, just a very, very good movie all around. Also, Bruce, was, were your allegiances towards the characters 
did you go for, were you on the, the guy's side for a second and then did you go to the woman's side or did you we flip him back I and forth? I won't say which side I stayed on, but I mostly stayed on one side. But it did it did definitely pull you. And I think definitely depending on your life experiences and kind of your expectations for things, you could be pulled back and forth pretty easily. So you think it also has something to say about class warfare? That oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, pretty explicitly. <laughs> right. Yeah. What do and you yes. the satisfying, you're probably going to say this, it's very satisfying ending, I thought. Really? I was reading yes. reviews saying, someone said it was a very pat ending, which I disagreed with. I, I thought the mm. ending was, I went back and I rewatched the ending. No. It's, what about a, a second watch of Sanctuary? Do you think it merits it as far as, is it... Hits you good and maybe you don't want to see it again or hit to, hit you good and maybe you might pick up things on, on a second watch. You know, I'm not sure. I think that – I think there's enough really interesting interplay between the two and definitely acting, uh, especially by Margaret Qualley because she was new to me. I mean I already knew that I liked Chris Rabbit, but Margaret Qualley was new. I think there's enough interplay and interesting like interaction between them to, to pull you back in a second time. The, the, the surprise of it would definitely be lost though because the, the, the way it plays out is – it, there's a level of surprise to it, I think. So, but I think it's rewatchable. I think it is. Uh, I'm gonna annoy you every single week, Bruce, with I, with these questions. When I asked you about Lewis Pullman, and you said, and we yeah, last week you said Bill Pullman for Starling Girl, right? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so Margaret Qualley, her mother is. Oh, I don't know. You have to tell me this one now. Andy Qualley. <laughs> Talib Kweli, oh. no, Andy McDowell. Andy McDowell is her, right. Margaret Kweli's mom. Not, not that Talib was a Kweli. little less predictable yeah. for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but Andy McDowell is Margaret Kweli's mother. I guess we know where she gets her talent from. So she's very, very good in this movie. I agree. I, I think she was in this uh, limited series or a series called Made on Netflix, which got some really good reviews. Mm -hmm. Have to see. I definitely want to see her work in that after watch like you, I was just, wow, she's so good in Sanctuary. And Christopher Abbott's also very good, but considering oh, yeah. where his character, his character is Hal and the, the Margaret Qualley plays Rebecca, where Hal has to go to his character himself without giving too much away. It's, it's a less showy performance, intendedly so, for Sanctuary. Bruce, um, I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say, I also stand by the comment I made to you that um, Christopher Abbott is definitely, absolutely a thousand percent the new Michael Douglas because he is in a lane, if you have not noticed, between this and piercing and yeah. possessor. He, let's just say, I won't be surprised when his personal life tells us certain things about his predilections. <laughs> let's say that. Oh, art imitating life. Or, you know what? Hopefully, it's not art imitating life or life imitating art. However, courses for horses, horses for courses. We'll see what uh, we're hoping. Christopher Abbott's a normal guy, but he really plays very intense roles. I, by the way, my bad on, on on giving Possessor a mixed review. I was completely wrong in that movie from several years back. Bruce was ahead of the curve. I think Eric Holmes liked Possessor as well. Did you love, did you praise Possessor? Do you remember, Eric? I, I, I remember Bruce really loving it. And I think I gave it a mixed review. And I, I don't know if you were just on, on board. Is, I that think the, you, yeah. is that the one where the... Andrea Riseborough. The, yeah. Serial killer. Okay. The killing yeah. thing. Going to bodies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so you were... You're, yeah, I guess my bad on that one. So anyways, regarding the ratings for Sanctuary in theaters May 19th, and thankfully, it's it's going to be on demand June 2nd. Is on, so that should be interesting as well. Am I, wait, did I say on demand? I think it's going to be in... I'm going to check that in a second. In, in theaters May 19th, it might be just wider release on June 2nd. But first, Bruce Berkey, final thoughts and your rating on Sanctuary. Um, I'm going to go four and a half on this one. I think it's strong. Wow. Four and a half ratings on Sanctuary. I was going to go four and a half on Sanctuary. Let me see right now. It's Again, it's in limited release Friday, May 19th and my, not on demand. My bad. It's going to be wide release on June 2nd. Four and a half. A strong four and a half stars for Bruce Perky. Sanctuary. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to say it right now. Bang it. Five star banger. Five star banger. <laughs> I'm going to watch this again. It, this is so good. Again, the and ending. With that banger, banger season. Ask me, continues. ask me permission and I'll let you bang it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, what Bruce said right now, you could actually relate that line to a certain section in the movie. Very dry wit, Bruce, on that regarding Sanctuary. Four and a half stars for Bruce. Five star banger for me from Sanctuary. I, I, I don't know if the link is still live for you, Eric Holmes, but this is a movie I think since you are a writer at heart and you're also a muralist you're also an artist but you uh i think it'd be interesting if you, to get your thoughts on sanctuary especially since it's exposition laden but and i, don't know. I respect dominatrixes 
Okay, I re- I respect sex workers. I mean, no trolling. Yeah. I mean, they work. I I I I even respect hundred eighty million dollar uh, heirs. Don't you, Bruce? Don't, well, don't. yeah, but, but her performance is electric. I mean, come on, her <laughs> yes. performance is amazing. Look, in, in a just world, right? Uh, we're we're talking year end. Yes, nominations, right? For Margaret Qualley, she'll please? get the Andrea Riseborough <laughs> Award for. Her You're not awesome popular performance. enough. You shouldn't be in here. Exactly. Bruce, is, is that is that not what happened with the uh, Andrew Riseborough? Yeah, it's it's one of those things, Bruce. If we were voters, I and look, I'm a voter for the Critics' Choice. I am going to look. It, it's uh, the year's almost halfway over, but it'll be hard to find a, a bunch of other actresses who are better than Margaret Qualley. I, I think she's going to be right up there on my nomination list this year. And you know, I'm sure maybe if we bring back the Find Your Film Cinematics Awards, it might be on your list as well, too. So uh, we'll see. Get to Sanctuary, Eric, and, and uh, we'll see what you think about it.